Welcome to the new chapter Project Schedule Management. This is your trainer and PMP coach Anand. In this session, you will learn overview of schedule management knowledge area. The learning objective of this session are, we'll start with overview to understand purpose of this knowledge area, trends and emerging practices where we'll talk about iterative scheduling with backlog and what is Kanban, tailoring consideration, so what is the life cycle approach that should be tailored, considerations for agile and adaptive environment, where we will try to understand traditional agile and hybrid environment, schedule management processes overview, so we will go through all the six schedule management processes and a quick review. Let's start with the overview. What is the first thing management will ask you as a PM once project is approved and it is assigned to you. Any guess? Well, it's very simple. When I can have a schedule? Even if it is the last day of the week, most probably your boss will ask you, can you please complete schedule over weekend and we can review early morning on the Monday? Well, all of us gone through similar experience and situation. Do you think schedule can be prepared overnight sitting in front of the computer and entering activities in the scheduling software? No, you can't. Preparing schedule involves many things and it is not one person activity. So this schedule management knowledge area is about creating a proper schedule. This is where scheduling framework is developed. You use project information like work breakdown structure, activities, resources, you choose scheduling method, scheduling tool, and finally develop a project schedule. What are the trends and emerging practices? The complexity and size of project will have impact on how project schedule management is done. In smaller project, we can create a single process. The activities like defining or identifying activities, sequencing them, duration estimation and developing schedule model all will be done once. In other words, schedule planning and schedule development is done as a part of planning process group once in an entire project. However, in large project, these activities will be repeated in each phase of the project as shown on the slide. It is also important to consider time and level of efforts required for knowledge management, risk management, benefit management, and other value-added activities in scheduling. In innovative or one of the kind of project, team may spend a lot of time on these activities. Another trend is iterative scheduling with a backlog. Well, we all are aware of a traditional scheduling approach in which first we get detailed requirements and then we will have a detailed schedule to deliver the agreed scope. But with changing industry dynamics, changing requirement and ever changing technology landscape, there is a need for speed and customer want to see something working, something referred as a minimum viable product, MVP. And this is where iterative scheduling helps. Typically, this is done in adaptive environment. It is a form of rolling wave planning for adaptive or agile or hybrid approach to product development. Take a look at a slide showing product backlog. What is product backlog? It is prioritized list of requirements. And how this works? Prioritized requirements are picked up from the product backlog. Requirements are elaborated in the form of user stories. Again, prioritize and refine to ensure they fit in the sprint cycle. And the sprint cycle is generally two to four weeks. Product features are developed using time box period, which is two to four weeks. This approach is used to deliver incremental value to the customer. It welcomes changes throughout the development life cycle. So at any point in time, users, business user, your product owner want to change something, it is possible. On-demand scheduling. On-demand scheduling is typically used in Kanban system and it is based on theory of constraint and pull-based scheduling concept of lean manufacturing. Let's understand each of them in detail. 
What is Kanban? Kanban is a method for visualizing the flow of work in order to balance demand with available capacity. It also helps you to spot bottlenecks. You can see Kanban board on the slide. What do you see on the board? Work items are visualized on the board. It also shows the processes, in this case, design, development, and testing. Participants can view progress with respect to process or work completed on the Kanban board. When team members complete his assigned task or work, he pulls out a new task and start working. So in this case, work is done as capacity permits rather than work being pushed into the process or assigned to resources. Of course, it assumes every member of the team knows the work and the activities that has been scheduled. Pool-based scheduling. It is used in lean manufacturing. In this, resources pull work from a backlog and work on it as soon as they are available or their previously assigned task is completed. Some of the key points that you should keep in mind are Pool-based scheduling doesn't rely on the schedule which was developed previously. Tasks are similar in size as in operations, and it limits team's work in progress to balance demand with the delivery capacity. Theory of constraints. It is used in lean manufacturing. It helps you to identify the most important limiting factor and systematically improve it. Constraint is also often referred as a bottleneck. It uses a process known as five focusing steps to identify and eliminate constraint. So to start with, identify the constraint, make a quick improvement using existing resources. Generally, we say make the most of what you have. Review all other activities in the process to ensure they all are aligned. Elevate means take analysis to the next level. So if the constraint still exists, consider what further action can be taken to eliminate it. And finally, repeat the process until it no longer is a constraint. Tailoring considerations. Because each project is unique, project manager may need to tailor schedule management processes. Following are the key considerations for process tailoring. Life cycle approach. What is the most appropriate life cycle approach that allow for a more detailed schedule? Next is resource availability. This is the major factor that may influence project duration. Availability of resources, their productivity, need of hiring human resources, or purchasing, renting physical resources, all should be considered uh, in a process tailoring. Project dimensions. Project dimensions may have impact on desired level of control required to manage the project. The factors like project complexity, technological uncertainty, uniqueness of a product may result into many risks and issues on the project. Process tailoring is required to manage these project dimensions. Technology support. How technology will help you to develop a schedule, store it, generate report, and communicate to various stakeholders. For example, scheduling software used to create schedule, communication tools selected for stakeholder communication. So all they yeah, utilizing these technologies, yeah, these tools may require process tailoring. Considerations for agile and adaptive environment. In larger organization, there may be mixture of large and small project. Scaling factors like team size, geographical distribution, regulatory compliance, technical complexity should be considered in a project planning. To deliver larger enterprise-wide system, multiple approaches like traditional predictive or adaptive or hybrid approach can be used. Let's discuss iterative scheduling and project manager's role in detail in next slide. Adaptive approach or iterative scheduling. It uses short cycle to undertake the work, review the result and adapt as necessary. It also provides rapid feedback, delivers the incremental value and welcomes changes. In Scrum approach, each sprint is delivered through iterative scheduling. Let's understand how it works and what are the different elements. 
Let's start with the product backlog. It is a prioritized list of product requirement developed based on the product vision. Each iteration or sprint will help us to deliver incremental product. Sprint planning meeting is held to define the sprint goal of each iteration. Requirements are picked up from the product backlog and elaborated in the form of user stories. Sprint backlog is finalized with selected user stories or requirement which can be developed in the agreed period. The time period of a sprint is typically two to four weeks. Within the sprint, a daily scrum meeting will be held and each of the meeting is time boxed. During meeting, Kanban board is used to see the sprint status, which activities are work in progress, which are completed, etc. When all user stories are completed from a sprint backlog, it means the sprint is completed. Sometimes sprint is completed when you reach the end of the sprint cycle. At this time, sprint review meeting is held. The product owner and the customer must participate in this meeting. Scrum team will demonstrate the working software or product and get a final buy-in. Finally, the sprint retrospective is held after the sprint review at the end of each sprint. During the retrospective meeting, the team self-identifies what worked well or what did not work, along with the potential solutions. It helps incorporate continuous improvement. And the output of sprint cycle can be potentially shippable product or minimum viable product, MVP. Now, one more thing you need to keep in mind on the larger uh, agile yes, yeah, scrum based project multiple teams may be working in parallel so they might be executing parallel sprint so we have to be aware of this and plan according to, accordingly to take care of the interdependencies between different teams role of project manager Project manager role is not changing based on managing project using predictive or adaptive life cycle. This might be contradicting if you have studied for agile certifications like Scrum. This is because as per the certifications are standard, Scrum master role is different than project manager's role. In reality, there are commonalities and differences. Let me give you some example of commonalities. They both are concerned about team's performance and see the way to improve the team's efficiency. Scrum Master engages with the team for facilitation and coaching. He provides food and shelter, so he protects them. And the project manager also engages with the team to resolve their issues, their team issues and conflicts. Both the roles are not the final decision-making authority on the product's requirement. Scrum Master assists a product owner to manage product backlog and project manager seeks input from a client or concerned stakeholders. So once again, remember for PMP exam, the role of a project manager and role of a Scrum Master in a Scrum kind of a methodology, both are same. Let's take a look at various processes in the schedule management knowledge area. First one is plan schedule management. It is the process of establishing policies, procedures, and documentation for a project schedule. In simple word, this is where schedule management plan is prepared. Next is define activities. It is the process of identifying and documenting specific actions to produce the deliverable. Sequence activity. The process of identifying and documenting relationship among project activities. So you define activities and then you sequence activities. Next is estimate activity duration. It is the process of estimating the number of work period needed to complete individual activities with estimated resources. Again, resources are coming from resource management knowledge area. Develop schedule. The process of analyzing activity sequences, duration, resource requirement, and schedule constraint to create the project schedule. So this is where final project schedule is created, which is also called as schedule baseline. 
And finally, control schedule, the process of monitoring the status of project activities to update the project progress and manage changes to the schedule baseline to achieve the plan. In simple word, this is where you will monitor and control the project schedule and do the adjustment. Good job. You have completed overview of project schedule management knowledge area. So let's do a quick review. In overview, we learn about purpose of schedule management knowledge area. We talked about trends and emerging practices like Kanban and lean manufacturing. We talked about tailoring considerations where we said life cycle approach and technology may uh, impact how you tailor the processes. Considerations for agile and adaptive environment. And we also learned what are the six different processes uh, inside this knowledge area. See you in next session to learn plan schedule management process where we will develop schedule management plan. Thank you.